Now, I spoke in Ottawa this last weekend, and I'm going to be quite candid with you. I, I was exposed for the first time to the pain, the suffering, and the anger of English language groups. I haven't really thought about them much in the past. They have, well, they've got stories to tell. Uh, Jürgen Vollerath is president of the Coalition of English-Speaking Canadian Organizations. He's driven all the way to Tirana uh, to be Tirana. with us now. You know, I, I really was stunned. And I, I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. I, I thought, are oh, these people, what are they moaning about? Bilingualism is slightly annoying, but it doesn't matter. The place, the restaurant was packed. Yes. There were people of all ethnic backgrounds there. There, there were French Canadians there. Exactly. All saying that well, you're being persecuted, you're, you're being denied jobs, you're having to leave and move to other areas. Tell me, what, what are your complaints? Exactly right. Uh, those are the complaints, Michael. We are now facing the first generation of 20 and 30-somethings that are actually... Uh, have passed through the school system, have taken French immersion, only to find out that it's not good enough. It's not going to work for them. For what? So, you know, to get jobs in not only in the uh, federal government, in the provincial government, in municipal governments, and now, because of the lies and the spin that has been perpetuated through this this notion that we're a bilingual country when we are not, mm -hmm. um, even the private sector has bought this spin. And now the private sector is putting language restrictions on the most meaningful, meaningless jobs. So even your MOOC jobs are now getting uh, bilingual uh, classifications. Where though? Because I, people watching... Eastern Ontario Okay, because in the west of this, the country and in Toronto as well, right. this would all be a surprise. That's correct. You so we're, we're, we're talking around Ottawa, bordering onto Quebec, and, and, and how far in? Into, into Kingston, perhaps? I know a registered nurse in Kingston whose family has been there for 150 years and was just told that her French wasn't good enough to work as a nurse in the hospital. How good that, is she that, at saving people's lives? Though? She's very matters? good. <laughs> that's what matters, and that, that's what we're saying, Michael. Uh, the province of Ontario has now designated 28 jurisdictions bilingual, and we spoke about this on Saturday. Yeah. Durham, Hamilton... I'd be How willing to it? guess there's nobody there that speaks the language, but it's costing us all kinds of money. And, and here's the thing. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had contacted the mayor of Winchester. Winchester is a little burg uh, just south of Ottawa. And uh, we called him and said, did you know that you were designated a bilingual jurisdiction by, the, by Premier McGinty? And he says, no, no, it's not possible. Everybody around here speaks English. It's not a problem. And uh, I said, well, just check the, the Ontario government website. And he did. And we called him back a little bit later, and they said, well, it's no problem. We're just going to have to translate some stuff. And I said, no, no, no. That, it goes beyond that. Because what happens is this, Michael, and this has happened in the federal government, and, and, and it was very, very slow in developing, but now we're starting to see the fruits of this whole thing. Uh, what happens is, is that they will get the frontline worker, Susie, coming in, who's been working there for 20 years. Uh, somebody's going to come in who's French, demand to get the service in French. She won't be able to speak French. She will either be moved let go or put in a different position to bring in someone who can then service but, that client. And here's where it goes from there, but, Michael. But, 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 the per, but the person who wants to be uh, served in French has a right to be served in French. And that's where we have a problem because originally when the Official Languages Act was created, it was to supply services where numbers weren't. And yes. that's where it's run amok. The numbers don't make sense. Well, you, you mentioned Hamilton and you mentioned Durham. Let's right. say uh, Oshawa and Hamilton. I, I, yes. I, two places I know very well. Right. I've never heard French spoken ever exactly. in either of those cities. Exactly. So why would they make them bilingual? And, and then you have to have people employed in government services who speak French Correct. even though no French is spoken? Correct. You've already had a situ You've had two situations here in Toronto that I, I don't understand why you people didn't raise your eyebrows up. One of them was a fellow who came into Toronto, made a, an illegal left-hand turn. <laughs> And, and took, went to court and won because it didn't say no left turn in French. You also had someone complain on your GO trains there wasn't enough advertising in French. So your GO trains had to put advertising. What's happening is, is you're getting the Michel Thibodeaux of the world, the one or two or three of these zealots, yeah. are, are creating such demand that is, in terms of logistics, Makes no sense because sure, the numbers aren't there. Because most, surely most French Canadians, I, I know many, and they, they couldn't really. In I fact, know, they're not even huge fans of bilingualism. They I just know. say, let us speak what we want to speak. Exactly. That's why we don't understand why this country is being changed. Think of it this way, Michael. Uh, it almost feels as if Quebec has annexed Canada. You've got a unilingual province of Quebec that has basically outlawed the English language. Almost a million people have been forced to leave there because they weren't allowed to use their own language. You talk about free speech. 
Okay, who set up that 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 province? Who did all the work? The English that were there established well, that province. The the Quebecers sir, that were sir, there sir, as Fra well. Uh, they uh, worked no, together. No, 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 no. Come on. First, first of all, the, pro the French were there a long time ago, doing enormous amounts of the work. I mean, that's I, I can't accept that. Well, no, but and they weren't always well treated. You can understand how they did. I we would like French that. to be respected. We want our religion, our culture, our, our, our race, our language to be respected. Exactly. Now, I, I can accept it. we've gone too far. But there had to be some sort of compensation in, in terms of the way people have been treated traditionally. But hasn't the compensation reached its zenith? I agree. Right? I and, absolutely and, and agree. So we've come to a point now where it's gotten, where, where if 22% of this country, Michael, are French speakers, but we have 67% representation in our federal government, the numbers just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Right? Someone told me on Saturday that, that there were areas, again, eastern Ontario, that had English names like Queenston and so on, yes. and, and they were suddenly being changed to yes. French names. What's that about? All over the place. Uh, there was uh, amalgamated uh, counties, uh, Glen, Gary, Prescott, Russell. Uh, one was changed into La Nation. Uh, they're changing street names in Orleans, in Ottawa. Um, all little... Uh, what's happening is, is the English schools that we've had and the English names on those schools, when they've kind of run their course, it becomes all of a sudden a bilingual school. So now you have maybe 30 or 40 kids going to this one school that used to house three or 400 children, mm. and they're putting up these green and white flags. And, uh, but, but English is the expanding language, even within, yes. certainly internationally, there's no doubt about of that. Course. But within Canada, people who come to, to this country, they're, they're learning English, they want to speak English, and so the demand exactly. for, for English language, even in your part of the world, it, it's not for French, it's for English. Well, where do, where, well, is exactly. the demand completely artificial? The demand for English? No, for French. For French. Yeah. It's totally artificial. In some areas, it is not. I'll grant you that. And that's where we go back to, Michael, where numbers warrant. If you've got a village that's totally French, of course you provide the services in French. But you don't tell a, a place like Winchester, where there's one or two people that speak French, and now you've got to change everything over in all your departments, and everybody has to become a French department? Look, it doesn't I, make sense. I heard the weekend, and you're telling me now, people who can't get jobs, they have to leave where oh, their yeah. family have been for 100, 150 years. Mm -hmm. Injustice. It's obvious injustice. Yes. Why isn't a politician, why, why, why isn't a bureaucrat standing up and saying, hey, come on, we just want to be reasonable, take care of everyone, but right. this is vindictive. Why aren't they doing that? Because we can't talk about this, Michael. We're not allowed to talk about this. As I told you earlier when I came in, I, we're, I'm so fortunate to be here to actually be here talking about this. This is a subject that has been taboo. You can't touch it. And, and here's a perfect example. Dr. Jim Pankew, when he was a, an Alliance MPP from Saskatoon Humboldt, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Pankew stood up in the House when Don Boudreau was the acting Prime Minister. He stood up in the House and he, and he asked the, the acting Prime Minister, he said, listen, um, based on uh, the incremental um, official bilingualism yep. and the fact that it is uh, you're getting more and more people into bilingualism yep. but you're having a corresponding decline in the number of anglophones that Very apply quick. for jobs in the, in, in the government mm -hmm. so what, what are you prepared to do about the systemic and discrimination he and he stood up and said it's the most insulting question I've ever heard in the House of Commons well then he hasn't travelled very much has he exactly well have you back on the show because I'm not going to bow down to any sort of censorship thank you so very much well thank you Michael thank you. Okay. thank you